All right, today we will be doing the 2009 question four on the AP Calculus exam. This is a free response that deals with area and volume, rotate around an axis, or using two graphs and an intersection point. For this one, we won't be doing rotating around the axis. We'll just be finding a general area and volume using cross sections. Uh, the two equations that we're going to use today is y equals 2x and y equals x squared. As you can see on the graph right here, it's a basic graph, the y equals 2x and y equals x squared. They intersect at 2, 4. The upper bound vertically is 4 and the uh, origin 0. And uh, horizontally, it's going to be a 0 and 2. The intersection points are the origin and 2, 4 once again. So, starting out, we're going to write a basic integrand for area. I uh, just shortened it up and I made y equals 2x f of a and y equals x squared f of b. And I set up the integrand from 0 to 2 because we're doing it horizontally this time around. And you do f of a because that is the higher part of the graph minus f of b the lower, which is the same as 2x minus x squared. And then we do dx because we're finding the antiderivatives. Then we move on over here. I have all this written for you just to start it out. The antiderivative of y equals 2x is x squared. That's a pretty simple one. Then we have the antiderivative of x squared, which is still pretty simple if you know power rule, and it's 1 third x cubed. Now that we have both of those, we can evaluate from 0 to 2 for both of them. That will do over here. And you set it up just like you'd think for x squared. You're going to do it over here, and you're going to do 2 squared. And then you're going to subtract 0 squared, which is just 0. And you're going to end up with 4. Uh, and for the purposes of the future thing, we're going to convert that to um, 12 thirds. Then we're going to do the same thing for the 1 third x cubed. We're going to evaluate from 2 to 0. In this one, we're going to end up with 8 thirds. Now we take this main integrand from up there, the original we started with. And we are going to make it f of a minus f of b. From 0 to 2, we have 4 minus 8 thirds, or wait, yeah, 4, which is the same as 12 thirds. And the total area after that is going to be equal to 4 thirds. All right. Now that is all of part A. All right, now we're moving on to part B, which we are given in the problem that for this solid at each x, the cross section perpendicular to the x-axis has the area given by a of x equals sine of pi over 2x, and we are asked to find the volume of the solid. So this is a pretty basic integrand. You're going to set it up pretty simply from 0 to 2, and you're going to put sine of pi over 2x dx. You are going to evaluate for the antiderivative, which is equal to, we'll start off with the antiderivative of sine, which is negative cosine. Inside stays the same, so it's pi over 2x. Then we're going to do chain rule. We're going to have to incorporate for that. So we're going to have to find what times pi over 2 will give us 1, and that is going to be 2 over pi. So now we have the antiderivative negative 2 over pi cosine pi over 2x. Now we're going to evaluate the integrand from 0 to 2, which is going to be this plugged in with 2 minus this plugged in with 0. So we'll write that right down here. All 
All right. So we have cosine of zero times pi over two, which after evaluation, we can cross out and go to one just for time purposes. I'm not gonna go into, into too much depth about that. I trust that you can handle it. And then we'll do cosine pi over two times two and we'll simplify that to pi, because the two twos cancel. And then we'll do cosine of pi, which is negative one. Now we have negative two over pi times negative one, minus negative two over pi times one, which is just negative two over pi. And since it's a negative times a negative, we'll do plus 2 over pi. Now we have negative times a negative here, so we have 2 over pi plus 2 over pi, and we'll equal that to 4 over pi. And you have the volume. Now, we'll move on to part C. We'll see if we have enough room at the bottom of this page. And we are given in the problem that it has the same base, r, but for this solid, the cross section is perpendicular to the y-axis, and they are squares. Uh, this, we're asked to write an integral expression, but we do not have to evaluate it because we do not have a calculator, and it's a pretty complicated one. So now that we are doing in terms of the y-axis, we take the original equations, y equals 2x and y equals x squared, and we are going to solve for x in terms of y. So for the y equals 2x, we'll have x equals 1 half y. And for y equals x squared, we'll have x equals square root y. I trust you guys know how I got those. Now, we're gonna set up the basic aspects of the fact that it, the cross sections are square. So we're gonna have that one leg of the square is equal to, and then we're gonna have the farthest minus the innermost because it's in terms of the y-axis. So we will have square root y minus one half y. Now, since this is a square, the area is going to equal leg squared, so we're gonna have square root y minus one half y squared. So we'll write that little equation right here. That's squared. Now you set up the bigger integrand. And we're gonna go from question mark to question mark. I'll show you how to find those intersects later. And we'll go from square root y minus y over two squared, and now we're gonna do dy since we're doing the y-axis. Now we have our integrand, and now we have to find the limits to finish the basic integrand expression for the volume of the solid. So we're gonna look at our graph up here again, and we are gonna find now the vertical components of it rather than the horizontal. For the horizontal, we had zero and two. Zero is gonna stay the same now that we're doing it vertically, but now the upper bound is four. So we'll bring it back down here and we'll have the integrand from zero to four. Then we'll have square root y minus y over two squared dy. And you successfully found the volume in grant. Now, I'm gonna go back through here for the scoring guide if you guys don't have one available to you. This is a pretty basic one, it's a three, three, three. Every single aspect of the problem is worth three points as far as ABC goes. Out in nine, the first one, where we're finding just the basic area, we have one point for the integrand, which you're gonna have right here the f of a minus f of b in our case, or you can also count it when you have all of the stuff plugged in. You're gonna get one point for the antiderivatives over here, and you're gonna get one point for your answer, which is 4 thirds right here. In b, 
it's going to be the same exact thing. We're going to have one point for your integrand, which is right here. We're going to have one point for your antiderivatives, which is all of this junk right here. And we're going to have one point for your answer for pi. For C, it's a bit different. We're going to have two points for your integrand, since this, uh, this question is asking really just for the integrand. And that is going to be right here. That's going to be without the intercepts. Uh, that's just going to be your basic square y minus y over 2 squared dy. And then you're going to get an additional point for the limits 0 and 4. And uh, on the actual test, if you come across a problem like this, you're going to want to put in writing how you found those. You're going to want to write that you found the vertical components instead of the horizontal components. Uh, basically, if you do it exactly how we went through in this video, you're going to get a 9 out of 9. And if you do it every time like that on all the problems, you're going to get a 5 on your AP exam. Good luck.